They'll be calling you a radical. I'm going to slow down and I'm going to give a synopsis about Fukushima to a lot of people that are get them up to date on how this evolved. And I'll go slow, more in a lecture style. Remember when I used to flip the soup can behind my back? I painted with the soup. Free on Megan Rice. Well, it's oranges now because it's all about survival. So, anyway, before I go, start talking about the evolution of Fukushima, how this played out, and what's going on, and how this is playing out, and the corruption and the evil. First off, I'd like to say I went to the Sierra Club. There was an incredible confrontation with me on the Huntington Beach Pier when I was down there at the San Onofre hearings as Joni Ray and I shot that iconic, iconic historical footage over at the San Onofre reactor and we exposed the fake union workers, the you know the, the greatest metaphor of this whole fight, the San Onofre employee parking lot. And I showed her look up there, solar panels. But anyway, I went to this I, I, I had an incredible confrontation with on the Pier Pacific Beach with, well, excuse me, with Greenpeace, with Greenpeace. With the Sierra Club, I had an outrageous confrontation at the Utah Energy Conference. Those punks. We have nobody to defend this. I've tried. I've reported this from day one. And finally, you know, as this whole thing was going along, and finally it hit me one time, and then John Fairhurst sent me an email. and Anonymous. I mean, really, what has Anonymous evolved into? Anonymous really has evolved into the truth. You know, aren't that what they are? And now you think about it. If this, you don't think this is fascism? You think about the fact of Julian Assange. Now, Bradley Manning, that's one different thing. He shouldn't be in jail. But Assange was just the reporter. I mean, simply, they the reporter. So they're going after reporters. If what they did to Assange I mean, what they've done to so many of these people, can you imagine what they would have done to Walter Cronkite? Can you imagine what they, well, they did do it to Dan Rather. Think about Dan Rather, the guy who went into Vietnam and exposed the freaking ugly of that. The greatest reporter of a generation. And he's fired for saying George Bush was a draft dodger when George Bush, so to tell the truth, you're annihilated. I mean, that's, think about this, the truth, the truth. And it's all trumped by greed. I mean, this all comes down to sickening because these people are ugly, ugly people. This guy that's running the show for the Obama administration from Berkeley, Holdren, John Holdren, that's as ugly as they get. This guy's as ugly. Because that isn't that. Everybody talks about the blue headband. My blue headband, two years ago today, was my sickest day. I was slipping in and out of a coma in the bone marrow transplant center. And people know I said the whole time my hair all fell out. People said over and over and over that if I can get through this, I'm going to dye my hair blue in honor of the mighty blue Pacific as the Pacific genocide. And I've been going off on this. I'm a broken record, literally a broken record. I've been going off on this since the day out before it happened. I was head of the Atomic Marines, Semper Fi, Semper Fi. It's ironic, San Onofre's at Pendleton. They nuked my father to death in the Nevada test site. I watched them load him in the body bag. The most perfect, healthiest man i ever seen. And I like all these assholes who say, oh, maybe the world does need to be depopulated. like this John Holdren. I mean, read into this guy. This is the guy running the show, 32 team panel. They want to they go kill themselves. Because these people are ugly. I mean, on the inside, ugly. That, why do you think all the, a lot of these great spiritual, intuitive people that are fighting this are Southern Cal? Because the sunshine, that beautiful place. I mean, for millions and millions of years, generations worship that mighty blue, beautiful Pacific. That's what this headband is about. The chemo was burning through the top of my head. As you know, I wore the Jim Hansen hat for a long time. And I says, I will not take that hat off until I'm better. And I took it off. I put this on because I did dye my hair blue and I gave some lectures in honor of the mighty blue Pacific. The jet stream. It's homemade. It was made in the U.S. I mean, let's talk about these ugly, 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 because they got no sex, they got no game, they got no art, they got no creative. So their money is their overcompensation for their lack of anything creative, anything beautiful, anything sexy, anything dynamic, anything joyful, anything loving, anything happy. They don't have it. So they overcompensate. They're hateful, evil, evil, hateful. So Uncle Bomb. Uncle Tom, he, he will go down as the greatest Uncle Tom because his mother was a downwinder. Barack Obama's mother was a downwinder. She died very young. The open air test in Utah hammered 
Oklahoma and Kansas just as hard as uh, of Utah. Their cancer rate, she, so he's so disrespectful. He's got no spine, and I voted for him both times. He's spineless. John Kennedy, and TEPCO really is the Lee Harvey Oswald of this whole thing. Patsy, Patsy, Patsy. John Kennedy stood up on September, or excuse me, July. He addressed the nation. You listen to that whole July 26, 1963, because he loved the environment. There's nothing more beautiful, more sexy, more creative, more spiritual, more powerful, more loving than to fight for the environment because nothing else matters. Okay, Fukushima happens. The earthquake on the impact of the quark day 31111. The earthquake wasn't the tsunami. These plants are only built to handle about a 7.7, 7, 7.8 is the maximum they can handle. They'll tell you that. We knew when it was a 9 point or 8.9, whatever, that they fractured. So this is contained madness that sits in these scars. This is could totally contain nuclear fission. Once it's released, so they fracture. It was released in the atmosphere immediately, and I went crazy. Gunderson's in there arguing with me. So many people were in there arguing with me. It happened immediately. Hardcore. I knew it. I went crazy. A lot of people went crazy. So the Obama administration knew it. Gregory Jacko, who was appointed the head of the Nuclear Regulatory Committee as a gift to Harry Reid, a Mormon from here, head of the Senate, to block Yucca Mount because Yucca Mount is where we're all going to store this madness. It's built in Nevada. Gregory Jacko, I've earned a lot of respect over this for. He's called into the Situation Room. They meet in the Situation Room. This has all been reported now. They have the Joint Chiefs of Staffs in there. They have their science expert from Berkeley, Holdren. They have all these maniacs in there. It all comes down to economy, 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 economy. Relationship with Japan, relationship. And this is being reported now. So, Jacko comes out. You can see he's a gas. He's just, <gasps> he takes the fifth on the hill. He's called to the hill. He resigns over it. Then they appoint Alice McFarland, who's a geologist, but she's thrown to the wolves. She's learned her lesson that Barack Obama is a puppet for the nuclear industry, for the Department of Energy. That's who's running this evil cartel show. So anyway, through the treaties that were signed after World War II, the United States runs Japan. The United States is Japan. TEPCO bought Westinghouse. Yes, Westinghouse still runs the show. That's who owns those plants over there. Excuse me, Toshiba. That's who's running this show. So here's what they did. And this is being reported. This creep, evil, ugly, this is the ugliest person on the face of the earth. The science and technology team takes over. They appoint a 32-team panel, ran by John Holdren. Yeah, he's the Depop guy. He's an evil, ugly, ugly creep. Okay, so Obama hands the reins to them. And as far as California, the cover-up, the marine biology, nobody reporting out at the city. There were international studies in there in June, which I've related them. Whistleblower sent to from Berkeley. I put them out there before they went out public. I've read it how many times that they went in June. I reported they're dumping water. So what happened the first five days of Fukushima? The plume went up, blew over into the atmosphere all over the United States. Well, we have what we call RADNET which is the Radiation Detectnik Network. It's government ran, it's massive, it's gigantic. It was bolstered after 9-11 in the name of terrorism like everything else. So we had, we have thousands of those set up and you go online and watch the radiation. The radiation was spiking all over North America. So what did they do? They crashed Radnet. And their answer was to raise the legal limits, which they did. They raised them dramatically, which we were already 12 times higher. So then they went into cover up mode and allowed John Holdren and the Berkeley Livermore Lab team to, they claimed that they had a way to handle this. They had a way to handle this through their technology, their cold fusion, their nanotechnology, which they've been lying and saying that for 40, 50 years because that's, I mean, they make a lot of money on this fallacy. Nuclear is the biggest lie in human history. So they go into cover up mode and everybody plays. They go to Southern California. When I was in Southern California, everybody, Tourism economy, tourism economy, tourism economy, because they're willing to give their lives to die and kill their children and kill their family for, I guess, their money, which it isn't even their money. They don't have any money. The economy already crashed. So that's what they did. That's what they've done the whole time. So the marine biologist departments all over, which are funded by the Department of Nuclear, Department of Nuclearism, the Department of Energy in D.C. is two, two blocks. It dwarfs anything. It's bigger than the Pentagon. Little secret door to get in there. It's the biggest cash cow by the so-called 1% oligarchs in the history of mankind. 
So they go into cover-up mode and thinking these guys will handle it. These guys couldn't handle it. They never could. These ugly, ugly people. When deep down inside, they don't even care. Because, you know, his philosophy, you can read this bet that he made in 1980 that, oh, the overpopulation is going to put pressure on commodity pricing. And he lost the bet. So he gambled again with us, and he lost again, but with us. And I love all these people. This is the great equalizer. They think they're above it all. They're not. Steve Jobs died of this disease. They're killing their own. So any one of you who are going in denial, think this is not real, years from now, I want you to, grandparents and parents, how are you going to speak to your children? So the cover up went, I'm going crazy, I'm going crazy. I'm, the media is covering it up. Everybody's in the name of their dollars, and they're not. This is pure greed. Name of the dollars, name of the dollar. And I'm like China syndrome, China syndrome, which is nuclear fission. It's going to happen. It started to happen. That's what the trending level started to get reported out of the wells this year, which has happened the whole time. So everybody's denying it's a meltdown. It took six months for them to even melt to admit it was one core meltdown, including Gunderson. I'm saying it's a meltdown from anybody with any logic knew it was. So. On day five, IEA, the International Atomic Energy Association, and the World Health Organization, which is the nuclear industry, was kidnapped in the 50s via the UN under the mantra of nuclear weapons. This is all has to do with nuclear weapons. The, you know, pay the dragon slayer, the military industrialized complex. When Eisenhower gave that speech, he meant it. I used to make my students read it. He saw the writing on the wall. So did Kennedy see the writing on the wall. Every single president has no spine. We don't have men as leaders anymore. We have spineless fucking puppets, all of them spineless fucking puppets, including Obama, who I voted for both times, is the uncle, he is the Uncle Tom. How's he going to answer to his children? He's a spineless fucker. All of them are spineless. They're no fucking, you know, all of, Congress, all of them, all fucking these politicians because they bow to the money because that's all they understand. Because it's overcompensation, as I said earlier. So that's the mode they went into and everybody played. Everybody played. The marine biologists have played. The media's played. Everybody's played, so it's relied on a bunch of us grassrooters. They crash Radnet, who's still down. Now, Gina McCarthy was head of Radnet. Talk about award failure. So, after Obama gets reelected the second time, new EPA chair. Who is it? Gina McCarthy. Lisa Jackson, who was head of the EPA before, goes to work for the slave owners in China, Apple. So we call for hearings. I'm going to, with Barbara Boxer's office on the San Lafayette thing. I'm hammering Wyden's office every day, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So as it falls out, Barbara's Boxer's office, okay, we're going to do it. We got them educated. I used to call them over and over. I had my army calling them over and over. They had hearings. They pushed them underground. And in the meantime, Megan Rice is trying to call attention to this, the 83-year-old nun and the plowshares gang. They go to Y-12 in Tennessee, which where they moxie the fuel and supposedly black water and these uh, people are we're spending billions to protect it. She just snips the fence and walks in. Says, oh, they thought they'd be arrested and, you know, do some time. She's an activist. Took hours and hours for anybody to even show up. You know, because it's pay the dragon star. Oh, this is the name of terrorism. It's a boom town in D.C. They're just throwing money at protecting when there are no, there's no terrorists. I mean, it's all facade. The terrorists is the Department of Energy. So this thing's evolved and evolved and evolved, and nobody wants to listen because people are so ignorant they don't even understand that nuclear is very real. We use nuclear energy, and it's been a giant catastrophe. And the cover-up of Chernobyl, as she said in the Battle for Chernobyl, you watch the Battle for Chernobyl, that award-winning documentary in 2006. Alice says in it, the worst thing to come out of those reactors at Chernobyl, the reactor at Chernobyl, that explosion, was not plutonium, was not cesium, was lies. The IA spent $4 billion of propaganda war. People knew the truth of Chernobyl, they were done. They were over. And then America just dropped the ball. America, in a, because America turned ugly. And they fell for this freaking fairy tale, zero interest rate, world globalization as far as markets. They got rid of tariffs, we got user user rate, this far, free market fairy tales. We fell for it all in the name of our money. When you don't have any money, none of you have any money. So. They'll talk about season 137, they'll talk about Santrum. We know that nuclear fallout is 100% correlated with cancer. 100%. 100%. It's accumulative. So, we pile on, here comes the Nevada test site, which killed Barack Obama's mom, which killed my father, which killed so many, and we accept cancer. Cancer, to die of cancer, for, 
it, it kills me how you accept it, how people are just accepting it. They'll cut their breasts off, they'll cut the prostate out, they'll freaking wipe out themselves financially. And then we get Chernobyl, and cancer rates keep increasing, and keeps death be a cancer. And they say, oh, the mortality rate climbed, be a medicine. Oh no, it's declining. The life expectancy in Belarus and Ukraine went from 72 to 51, wiped out a swath of real estate. Just, you can't even, I love these people that try to posh and grim, but somehow somebody's gonna go back in there. Yeah, go for it. Go set up camp there. Radiation is cancer. Radiation is death. It's Cuma, now Fukushima. It piles on. You're all born with the nematocysts in, laying on your bone marrow. Chernobyl, now this piles on. It's a cumulative. So people don't understand. This is not going away. It's never going away. And anonymous, because they tell the truth. I mean, I said it in that speech to tell the truth. Would anybody ever believe it would be so dramatic and so hardcore to tell the truth? tell the truth is to go to jail and be looked at and laughed at. To lie is to live your facade in your hairsprayed fairy tale. You got the hairspray and the church leaders, there's their problem right there. The moral leaders, we have no moral leaders. You know, go bomb them Iraqis when Iraqis never did nothing. In the name of Jesus Christ, wow, I love them for they know not what they do. Thou shalt not kill. They're devils in hairspray. And it's the American poppies because change doesn't come from here. Change comes from here. That's us. And we're doing it now. Post ignorance, that's what it is. Post ignorance, three years ago, threw a tent over all this because this is all human rights. And this is the ultimate one. That's why I went crazy, 311.11. You know, I dropped the ball on social inequality. I dropped the ball on a lot of my activism thing and all in Fukushima because nothing else matters. It's very real and it's killing. It's killing. It's birth defect, it's maiming our babies, it's maiming our mamas, it's maiming our children. It's freaking killing. I've watched it so much in our hospital. I mean, I got cancer seven months after I went crazy. It's gonna give you leukemia, it's gonna give you, then I got a dramatic, hardcore form of leukemia. I seen the worst of the worst of the medical industry. 12 doctors had me dead wrong. Biopsied when they shouldn't have, seeded my cancer. Then these brilliant doctors, Vincent Hansen and Fimbo Peterson saved my life. And that beautiful hospital down there, I saw the best of the best. And that's who we need in this fight. We need the best of the best. This is not quantity, this is quality. We need leaders and individuals as an individual. You are your leader. Steve Grant set up beautiful with our thing. You obviously led yourself here. This is about the truth, simply. And if you, you people that want to argue about nuclear is the replacement coal, nuclear safe, whatever, they, then why all the fucking lies? It's not safe. You bet it's cancer. Nuclear fall is death by cancer. It's that simple. And the data's all there. The atomic veterans proved it to us. The Chernobyl proved it. The data's all, it's right, it's right there. It's been read over and over and over. So. This is all about your own sickening greed and your own dogmatic idealism. Well, keep it up and see where it gets you. Stay in tune. Most ignorant project, 29th to 30th, but it's going to go on for a long time. Thank you, Anonymous. I love you guys. Stay in tune. The San Onofre employee parking lot, and I showed her, look up there, solar panels. But anyway, I went to the... I've, I had an incredible confrontation with on the Pier Pacific Beach with, well, excuse me, with Greenpeace, with Greenpeace. With the Sierra Club, I had an outrageous confrontation at the Utah Energy Conference. Those punks. We have nobody to defend this. I've tried. I've reported this from They'll be calling you a radical. I'm going to slow down, and I'm going to give a synopsis about Fukushima to a lot of people that are, get them up to date on how this evolved. And I'll go slow, more in a lecture style. Remember when I used to flip the soup can behind my back? I painted with the soup, free on making rice. Well, it's oranges now, because it's all about survival. So anyway, before I go, start talking about the evolution of Fukushima, how this played out, and what's going on, and how this is playing out, and the corruption and the evil. First off, I'd like to say, I went to the Sierra Club. There was an incredible confrontation with me on the Huntington Beach Pier, when I was down there at the San Onofre hearings, as Joni Ray and I shot that iconic, iconic historical footage over at the San Onofre reactor, and we exposed the fake union workers, the, you know, the, the greatest metaphor of this whole fight, day one. And finally, you know, as this whole thing was going along, and finally it hit me one time, and then John Farrer sent me an email, and anonymous. I mean, really, what has anonymous evolved into? Anonymous Roy's really evolved into the truth. Aren't that what they are? And now you think about it. 
If this, you don't think this is fascism? You think about the fact of join Assad. Now, Bradley Manning, that's one different thing. He shouldn't be in jail. But Assad was just the reporter. I mean, simply, they're the reporter. So they're going after reporters. If what they did to Assad, I mean, what they've done to so many of these people, can you imagine what they would have done to Walter Cronkite? Can you imagine what they, well, they did do it to Dan Rather. Think about Dan Rather, the guy who went into Vietnam and exposed the freaking ugly of that. The greatest reporter of a generation. 